Hi, we're here today to talk to you about registration for the 2022-2023 school year. I'm Miss Sinclair, and I work with students with last names A through E. Miss Aris works with students with last names F through J. Mrs. Ponte works with students with last names K through Q. And Mr. Verlich works with students with last names R through Z. We're help here to help guide you through the registration process and are going to share some important information with you today to make sure you're ready for next school year. The first thing you need to know is that there are three different parts to the graduation requirements. You need to have enough service learning hours, you need to pass your state assessments, and you also need to meet the course requirements and the pathway requirements. We're going to talk a little bit more about these and then how to register for classes next year. So for graduation requirements, you will need four credits of English. You will need four credits of math. You need one course each year that you're in high school. You will need three credits of social studies, three credits of science, and an extra rigor credit in anything that you're interested in. You also need one credit in a fine art. You need one tech ed credit, a half credit of PE, and for most students, you will need a half credit of health. If you are currently a freshman or will be an incoming freshman, you will need to have one full credit for health. You also need to have financial literacy or principles of finance, which would be either a half credit or a credit. You also need to have a pathway, which is two years or more of a certain path or course. We will be handing out the graduate graduation requirements for each year in an email to come later after this presentation. So let's talk a little bit more about the pathways. If you are planning to attend a four-year college, it is very important that you take the college prep path, which would be two years of a foreign language. If you are a freshman currently, or an incoming freshman and beyond, it must be the same foreign language. That means I can take French 1 and French 2. I can take ASL 1 and ASL 2, but I can't take French 1 and Spanish 1 and it not meet the requirements for the college prep path. There are also other paths that are school-based at Calvert High. These are listed below. Academy of Finance, Accounting, Business, Biomedical Project Lead the Way, Career Research and Development, CASE, which is an agricultural program, Computer Science, Criminal Justice, Engineering Project Lead the Way, Teacher Academy of Maryland, and NJROTC. Students, you should have start your pathway by junior year. If you are going to be a senior and you're not sure about what your pathway is, make sure you contact your school counselor right away so that we can help ensure that you're on the path for graduation. Now, there are pathways here at Calvert High and there are also pathways at our CTA. These pathways are below. Academy of Health Professions, Auto Mechanics or Service Tech, Carpentry, Cisco Networking, Cosmetology, Electricity, Firefighter and EMT, Food Production, Graphic Arts, HVAC, Home Improvement, Interactive Media, Masonry, Plumbing, Welding. Students typically begin the pathways at CTA their junior year. You'll learn later in this presentation how to find out more about those pathways at the CTA and how to sign up to make sure if you are a 10th grader currently and would like to attend CTA next year, there are deadlines that you need to meet to apply for those different paths. If you are planning to go to that four-year college, like I previously stated, you want to make sure that you're meeting some of the requirements that the colleges are looking for. You should have at least two years of the same foreign language if you are planning to go to a four-year school right after high school. You also should challenge yourself taking a rigorous schedule 
maybe trying an AP course if you can. There are all different types of AP courses. So if you're unsure of what class to take, you can talk with your school counselor who can help pick one out that best fits you as a student and maybe what you plan to study at college. AP courses, just a note about them. They are challenging. You're taking a college level course in high school, but they have the potential to earn you college credit based on your scores at the end of year AP exams. One thing I will caution you with, the more AP courses you take, the more difficult it may be to put as much effort into all your classes because you should expect to have at least one hour of homework each night per AP course. So if you have three or four AP courses and you also work or play a sport or both, it might be difficult for you to be able to complete all those APs. So you may wanna talk with your counselor about what APs are appropriate and what your life circumstances are to be able to complete those. If you have questions about the AP course requirements, you can talk to any of the teachers in that subject area. The county is offering some new courses this year. One will be Russian One. That course may be offered virtually. As you can imagine, it's difficult to find a teacher. They do have qualified teachers, but not sure enough for every high school. So if you choose Russian One, there's a chance that you will be taking that concurrently with another high school through some kind of virtual method. Another new course is piano. You can take it just like guitar for either a half a credit or a full credit. Some other updates, this kind of happened near the end of last year, but we want to make sure everyone's aware that ROTC is now a pathway and you must complete at least three years of it. Foundations of Computer Science has been a tech ed, however, it couldn't be a tech ed if it was also part of the pathway you were completing, but now it can be both a tech ed credit and count for your pathway. Now, sign up for classes that you're interested in. Maybe this year we didn't run it because we didn't have enough people interested, but register for what you want, and then that will drive what courses we will be able to offer. Online courses. There is an option to take online courses while you're at Calvert High School. Listed are those which will be offered during next school year. You may have to pay for your online course, so make sure that you talk to your counselor about that. And when you're registering, that you put uh, that course on there with the correct number that indicates it's online. There is a process that must be completed so it's more than just putting on your registration sheet. So if this is something that you want to pursue, make sure you talk to your counselor about it. There will also be some courses offered online this summer. I know many of you are very eager to stay in your music programs or certain pathways or programs and you want to make sure you have enough room in your schedule. So you have chosen in the past, students have chosen in the past to take one of these courses so that it won't be something that's filling up a period next year or the following year in their schedule. Again, it has a cost associated with it, so make sure you talk to your counselor about that. Seniors, you have the ability to leave early. So once you have completed and registered for all the courses you need for graduation, if there is space in your schedule, you can choose to leave early. Some students work, some students do apprenticeships, uh, some students uh, drive to CSM and take courses. So if you wanna do that, you need to complete a pink early release form where you, are, you and your parents are showing understanding that when you have chosen early release, that means you cannot Stay at Calvert High School once your scheduled day is over. You must have transportation home or to work. Uh, you also, to get honor roll or to be eligible to earn honor roll, you must have at least four credits 
at Calvert High School as a senior. If you are interested in this, you can come to Guidance to pick, pick up the pink form. Dual enrollment. I feel this is kind of an area, um, it's again, mainly for seniors, but it, it causes some confusion. So you can do dual enrollment, meaning you after school or if you're a senior um, and you have early release, it might be part of your school day, you can actually drive over to CSM and take a course. Maybe it's psychology, maybe it's speech, um, anything really you want to. If you want to do that though, you need to register by going on the CSM website, filling out the dual enrollment form, and you have to have all of that completed by July 5th. So you'll go on there, you will register, they will send your counselor um, a form to complete as well that you meet all the qualifications to go. So if you want to do that, uh, no time like the present, you have till July 15th. But if that's something you're interested in, you might want to start at least getting that form done so you can start the process of choosing classes for the summer, which will have to be done with CSM. Okay, there's another type of en dual enrollment. Some students never get in their car, never go to CSM, and yet they can get college credit from CSM. So if you take, for example, Comp and Ret as a senior, um, you can choose sometime during that course, generally it's in the December range, to sign up, pay for the credit, and get a transcripted credit from CSM. So even if you turn up and go to UMBC after high school, that credit can still be transferred from the College of Southern Maryland from CSM to UMBC, and you can get a credit that way. We also have the op option for pre-calculus. There are some other options based on some programs, so if you're interested, you can also pursue that further with your guidance counselor. Hello, Cavaliers. This is Ms. Ponte, and now I want to share some information with you about how the process will go this year for you to actually choose your courses and register for next school year. So registration day is going to take place at Calvert High next Wednesday, February 9th. And what will happen is in your first period class, you're going to receive a paper registration form. And what you'll do is you'll take that form with you throughout the day and your teachers will sign off and recommend you for courses for next year. So what you will do then is you're going to give your form back to your eighth period teacher at the end of the day on February 9th, even if it's not completed. Don't panic because you're going to get the form back the following day. What we do is because we want copies of your teacher's signatures and anything they've recommended you for, we make copies of the forms in the guidance office. And then just in case you lose yours or something else happens, we have a copy for you. So don't panic about turning your form into your eighth period teacher if it's not done because you will get it back. We also ask that you complete your forms in black or blue ink if possible and that you print clearly so that we can read and understand what it is that you're writing on your forms. So now I want to go over what your registration form is going to look like. So here's a sample registration form and it'll look the same as always. Your grade level will be a little bit different, but basically what we need you to do is fill out this form in its entirety. So let me go over some things that are on this form. So up here at the very top is where you put your name, your address, phone number, all of those details. Please be sure to write your name on it because if you don't, we don't know whose form it is. And a lot of forms get turned into us without names on them. So please make sure the very first thing you do is write your name on your registration form. And then this part here underneath your name is where you're going to list the classes that you want to take for next school year. Now, some of the fields will already be sort of filled in for you. So for underclassmen, you'll have a spot to put your English class, social studies, science, and math. And then what you'll do is write in the course number here, the course name here, and then have your teacher sign off on whatever class, whatever level they're recommending you for. And for seniors, of course, you guys will only have English and math listed up here. Everything else will sort of be open. Then you've got room for your electives and what you'll do, you'll notice there's two different spaces here 
And the reason why there's two different lines like this is if you're taking a half year course. So let's say for example, next year you want to take PE and health. Those are two half year classes that will work together to make one full credit or one full year. So you would just wanna write them sort of together on two lines, like they're listed here, team sports and financial literacy. Now, if you're taking a full year class and most classes are full year, one credit, you're going to just put it you know, on one line like this, art and design. Um, now, if you have a class that's more than one period, for example, if you're going to be a junior taking Academy of Health at the CTA, that program for junior is two periods. So make sure you allow for that and include two electives, you know, your choice, first and second choice or second and third choice, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you allow two periods for that in your schedule. Um, and just make sure you know what your programs are and that kind of thing of what's going to take more than one credit. So then on the right here is where your teachers are going to sign. So this is where your first choice classes are going to go on your registration form. Now, one part of the registration form that a lot of students overlook and don't fill out is this part right here, the alternate courses. This to us as counselors is the most important thing on the form. And the reason being is that we work very hard over the summer to try to get you to be able to take all the things that you want to take that you put up here on your form as your first choices. However, sometimes things happen. Sometimes there's scheduling conflicts and we can't get you into everything we want. And that's when these alternates come into play. So this information is very useful if for whatever reason, we can't fit you in your first choice electives, we could put you in your alternates. We know what your second choice would be. So my advice for this is say, for example, for this, this Mary, the person who filled out this form, her second choice elective was art and design. And if she's trying to fulfill her fine art credit, it's really good that her elective two alternate is also a class that would fulfill her fine art credit. So be thoughtful about that as well as you're putting things in. If you're looking to meet a certain requirement for you know, one of your electives, make sure that your alternate would also meet that, elect or that um, requirement as well. And if you don't put in alternates, it becomes counselor's choice. If we can't fit you in a class, we're gonna just put you wherever there's space. And honestly, it might not be what you want. So please give us the information on what you would like to take as a backup in this alternate section here. Then at the bottom of your form, this is the space where you, we get some signatures. So we do your signature, your parents' signature, um, phone number and email for your parents. So just please take the time to very clearly fill out your form and you guys can understand how hard it would be to read this form as a counselor if you don't print clearly. So please be sure to print clearly and make sure you know what's happening. So also, I know a lot of you guys like to see your forms ahead of time and plan some things out. So if you check your email today, you'll have an email from me that's gonna include some information. One of the things is going to be sample registration forms. So you'll be able to take a look at this ahead of time, sort of plan out your classes. And I know something that everyone likes to really look at is the list of classes that are open to each grade level, which are generally printed on the back of your registration form. And that's going to be emailed to you today. So you can take a look at that before registration day next Wednesday and be prepared and know what you want to do. So I wanna talk about a little bit more of the registration process. So now that we know how to fill out our registration forms, we'll take care of that on Wednesday, February 9th. You'll turn your registration form into your eighth period teacher on February 9th, even if it's not done. And then what will happen is you're gonna get it back from your teacher, your eighth period teacher on February 10th, the following day. And then from there, there's two very important steps that we need you all to take as students. So the first step is to enter your course requests on to hack. Um, and in your handout today that you received, there are directions on how you can do that. And there's also a link to a video that will guide you through that. Um, and then another thing you have to do is turn in your registration form when it's fully complete with those alternates, parent signatures, all filled out um, to your eighth period teacher on Friday, February 18th. So February 18th is a very big deadline. So we need you to do two things by then. Enter your course requests on Hack, and we need you to turn in your completed registration form to your eighth period teacher. Now also when it comes to Hack, I just kind of said this briefly, but 
directions on how to enter your courses on Hack, that's in the handout that you received today, step-by-step -step with screenshots. It'll walk you right through it. If you're more of a person who wants to see it being done, there's a link on there with a QR code that you can scan to watch a YouTube video of them being entered. Um, so you have either of those choices. Now, if you do have questions or you need help with anything to do with scheduling from entering courses on Hack to finding out if you have room in your schedule to do certain programs or take certain classes, you wanna plan things out, we are available as counselors. You can meet with us every day at lunch from Wednesday, February 9th through Friday, February 18th. And you can find us the whole lunch in the guidance office. You'll be able to stop by the counseling office and meet with a counselor and get any questions you have answered. Let me give you guys a tip. We get very busy on the day forms are due. So come early. That's my advice to get the help that you need. And another thing when it comes to hack is you want to make sure that hack matches what you've written on your registration sheet. So if you change your mind, whatever the case may be, make sure they both match because we're going to defer and look at what you wrote on your registration form. So if you change something in hack, we're going to flip it back to what's on your form. So please make sure that everything matches and that it uh, is all exactly what you want. Now with registration, ideally, we want to give you guys the classes that you want to take. We don't want to have to put you in things and give you classes you don't want to do. And how you can have a voice in that process is by following this process and entering your courses on Hack and filling in your registration form and turning it in, turning it in by the deadline. So if you don't take this seriously and you don't complete these steps, your counselor will pick classes for you. And I can't promise you that the things that we would pick out for you would be the things that you wanna take. So just make sure that you take a little bit of time to plan out your courses, turn in your registration forms and follow these directions. Now, Mr. Verlich is gonna to talk to us about CTA. And Hi, Mr. Verlich here. And I wanted to share some more information with you about registration for the upcoming school year. If you're interested in attending the Career and Technology Academy, the first step in attending is to complete the CTA interest in survey. The survey is online. The link was emailed to you. Um, the link is also here in the presentation if you want to use this. Um, check your email for an email from Ms. Sutton. I believe it was sent on January 10th. If you still need the link, please contact me or one of the counselors and we will make sure you get it. Um, CTA interest surveys are due by February 24th. This is the priority deadline. And again, this is really the first step in attending. You must do this in order to attend. Um, the CTA is also having an open house for interested students and parents on the evening of February 17th at 6.30. Now on to some important dates to remember. First, registration day. That is February 9th. That's the day you're gonna get your forms from your teachers in first period. You're gonna walk around throughout the day, get the forms filled out um, with correct course numbers, teacher signatures, and so on. Um, the forms will be collected at the end of the day. The next day on February 10th, you will receive your forms back in eighth period. So make sure to turn the forms in on the ninth so you can get them back on the 10th. That is an important step. You know, don't, you know, don't be afraid to turn it in. You know, next is between February 9th and 18th, counselors will be available at lunch to help with entering course requests on Hack and scheduling questions. Currently, our plan is to be outside of guidance in the hallway and have some tables set up at that time where you can come and get some help during the one hour lunch. And that's between February 9th and 18th. The deadline to enter your courses on Hack is February 18th. Um, and the deadline for students to hand in completed registration forms to their eighth period teachers is February 18th. So remember, by the 18th, you should have put your courses into Hack and also turned your form into your eighth period teachers. Um, priority deadline again for the CTA is February 24th. So again, I can't emphasize how important that is. You know, how often kids later on say, oh, I wanted to go to the CTA, but you must do this survey by the 24th in order to be eligible. So please make sure you do. Then also, registration fair. This is something new this year. On February 4th, 
which is Friday. Um, at lunch, there will be tables set up in the atrium, and you can walk around and learn more about courses and programs available for next year. This is a great opportunity for um, if you're looking at some courses for, for the following year. Keep your paper registration packet that was given to you today. It contains all the important information. Also check your Outlook or CCPS email for more resources. And again, I can't emphasize how important it is to be checking your email on a regular basis. A lot of important information um, from school, you know, currently and, you know, things dealing with the future for next year are going to be emailed to you. You know, in there, one, a couple of things going out to you. One will be a sample registration form, also a fillable four-year plan. And then if you have any questions about registration, talk to your counselor. Me being one of them, Ms. Ponte, Ms. Sinclair, and Ms. Harris, you know, whenever you get a chance, you can email us, you can make an appointment, you can stop by the, the counseling office. Um, you know, I know we're back to one hour lunch, so that'll give you a good chance to see us. So take advantage of that. And again, if you need help, come see us.